All right, Fillmore Slim. Fillmore, uh, where'd you grow up? Where are you from originally? Uh, Louisiana. What's, what city? Baton Rouge. Baton Rouge. And uh, tell me about your childhood. You had both your parents when you were a kid? Oh, when I, oh, when I was a kid, uh, I come up in Louisiana, you know, and uh, both my parents, you know, uh, they were hard worker. My daddy worked on the train. My mama worked at the bank. And uh, in Louisiana, you know, uh, come up with just a little kid in Louisiana, enjoying life, you know. Had to work, you know. Good childhood, though. Well, yeah, I, I was working like uh, working for these drug stores and liquor stores. So, did you have role models that uh, kind of led you down this path that your life took? Oh, yeah, I got a lot of role models all, all over the world. Yeah, you know, I'm. I'm the godfather, you know, e even the hip-hop people, you know, Snoop, Ice-T, all them, you know, they, they honor me. Yeah, you're recognized as the, the godfather of this game. What, uh, what kind of, I mean, at what age were you when you first got started as a pimp? Oh, see, pimping wasn't my thing. Music wasn't my thing, see. I started off wanting to be an entertainer. You know, I, I watched big stars on the stage like B.B. King and all those type of people, you know, Lord Price and all them. So, and all the women screaming and hollering and things. So I didn't know about no pimping. So uh, that's what I wanted to be. I, I said, well, I'm going to be an entertainer. And all and I have all the women screaming and hollering at me, looking at me on stage. That was my goal. But the pimping, uh, uh, that, was, that wasn't my thing. You know, I, I didn't know I was going to be no pimp, man. <laughs> you know? So how did that happen then? Well, I'd have me traveling on the road playing music. Left Los Angeles on this tour, and uh, we stopped in a little town called Midland, Texas. And when we stopped in this town called Midland, Texas. Uh, we was making like about ten dollars a night. What, you know? what year is this? Oh, we you saying in uh, saying the fifties, say fifty four, fifty five. Mm -hmm. You're you're eighty. How old are you? I'm eighty five. You're eighty five. Yeah. So at this time, you know, we were the, uh, performing, right? And uh, right next to, to this club, it was a, a, a hotel. And the name of this club was called the White Front, you know? Uh, and it was right there in uh, Midland, Texas. So as we, I'm playing, playing the blues, you know, I'm playing piano, I ain't, you know? And uh, like I say, we making $10 a night. And uh, I noticed this chick, right? Head on, sit up, you know, and she keep going out, coming back, going out, coming back. So I didn't know what was going on. So in about five days, I'm sitting on the piano, and she come up and she say, here. I said, what is this? So that's for you. So I thought it was like a big tip, right? And then, so I put the money in my pocket, you know, and uh, then she kept doing this, right? So the fellas in the band said, man, that's a prostitute. And they say, uh, you know, uh, we don't need to be associating with her, with her. I say, man, I say, she gave me a little money every night. I say, now we ain't making but $10 a night. I'm going to take the money. I say, you know, so we did this about, she did this about maybe about a week. And I looked up, I had about, oh, man, close to about $125. And that was a bankroll done in, in 55, 56. So uh, we got ready to go back to L.A. They told me, no, first I asked, I said, what you do? She said, I go to bed with men for money. I said, well, what is that? She said, uh, they pay me money, and I go to bed with them. So I still didn't know. Then she had explained it to me, you know, about what it was. She was selling sex, okay? So, uh, so me being green, you know, not knowing what's going on, all I was doing, playing music, singing the blues. So uh, when we got ready to go back to L.A., you know, uh, she had a suitcase packed. She said, I want to go with you. I said, why? I said, what's your husband going to say? She said, I ain't got no husband. So the fellas in the band said, man, I surprised too. We ain't going to take her back to L.A., you know. I said, man, check this out. I'm getting $10 a night and looking at my little bankroll. I said, she going with me. I said, matter of fact, it's my van, so if y'all don't want to go, y'all catch the bus. So I brought it back to Los Angeles, right there on Vernon and Central, you know, and uh, stayed at a, a right above a fast food restaurant called Corny Island. 
So we, uh, so she said, well, show me where the girls were. And I said, right there on the corner. They had a big record store there. Same one that Rudy Ray Motors used to work in called Dolphin of Hollywood. So uh, I told her where the girls were at, and she went out there. And she came back. The second night she came back, she had another girl with her. I said, well, who was that? She said, that's our wife-in-law. I said, hey, married. She said, but in the game, she's with us. So now I got two girls. So now I put the, I'm playing guitar then. I put the guitar in the corner, and uh, they start calling me for jobs around L.A., and I told them that somebody else play in my place because uh, I had two girls on the corner, so I, w- I, w- I was getting paid, you know? What, what, what kind of girls? Black girls, white girls, Hispanic? Well, I had different Different ones? Different girls. Then you, you would have sex with the girls? Huh? You would have sex with the girls? Well, you couldn't have too much sex with the girls, you know. You see, because the game is a mind thing, you know. And if, you know, and if the girls go out and turn dates and things like that, and they come in, they tired. You know, so you didn't have to have too much sex. And then if you had a girl, she had to be at least six months before you went to bed with her. And were drugs part of the part of the game back there? Drugs was in the game, but I, I wouldn't buy I wouldn't buy drugs. Mm-hmm. Your girls would use drugs sometimes, but you you weren't involved. Huh? Your girls would use drugs sometimes. Oh, I, I had one girl with, with using drugs, you know, but uh, it's not your thing. She got away from me. Yeah. Yeah. Have you done prison time? Huh? Have you done prison time? Oh yeah, yeah. I did. I for you know, I see passport. I did uh, uh, five years. Yeah. Have you been married? Huh? Have you been married? Uh, I've been married uh, three times. I said three strikes, yeah. It's hard to do this and, and be married at the same time, I would think. Yeah. And then, uh, do you have kids? Oh yeah, I got seventeen kids, uh, uh, fifteen grandkids, eight or nine, ten, twelve great grandkids. So, what what is the uh, origin of pimping? Like, what, you know, they say it's the oldest profession, or prostitution is the oldest. Yeah, in the Bible, from the Bible. What what, what do you think the origin of this? pimping thing is was well for me it was uh it was fascinated you know it was fashion you know and uh you get all this money every night you know fresh money every night you know you know and uh i thought i was the king of sunset i said i did all mine down south down in los angeles oh is that right that's where that's where i got all my fame from l.a now, uh, there's a story that goes around L.A. that the first time you came to L.A. I sent my game down there. Yeah. And the, right there on Sunset, right there on. And the, and the cops gave you a hard time. Yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. And they, they arrested all your girls. Yeah, arrested all my girls. And what happened after that? No, the story was, when I first went to L.A., the pimp, this pimp took all my girls. Oh, is that what happened? Yeah, it was the pimp, not oh. the cops. Okay, the story gets changed over the years. Yeah, so the pimp took all my girls, and by, by me being fresh down there, you know, and they get in the car, so they drove up to me on Sunset. I never forget that red car, we sitting there pounding this chicken. Okay, they drove up Sunset. He said, these your girls? I said, yeah, they're my girl. He said, not no more. They said, they don't gave me your money, so they with me now. So what they did, they said, well, I guess you done lost all your game, so you might as well go on back to Frisco, you know? I said, no, I'm going to the telephone. So I went to the telephone and I called them troopers. You know what I'm saying? I mean, them was turned out. Called the troopers in and they came in. I said, y'all, I told them, I said, what you do? I said, fly to LAX, rent a limousine, and come down here and represent me. I told them where I was. And when the limousine came up and they all stepped out, so all the players said, man, who's all them women? I said, they mine. I said, if you kiss them, I'll leave town. So the, the girls that they stole were your second stringers. Oh, yeah. And the ones that you flew down were your first stringers. Oh, when I sent them with them troopers. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's a great story. So how has the game changed since you were doing it? Because the game has changed tremendously. Well, well, the game changed now. There's no respect. You know, uh, we, we was like gentlemen of leisure. You know, we didn't beat our women, you know, and make them go out there. You know, that's false in prison, you know. My thing was, you know, I, I meet a lady, you know, uh, and if she wanted, you know, if she was interested in my proposition, then we went with it, you know. But no force, none of that, you know. The women love me today, you know, because, and, and the people love me today, you know. I, I go around to schools, I talk to young, uh, uh, 
young people in the schools. I go to churches. I talk to young people. You know, uh, I, I've been to a couple of colleges, you know, talking to young people. And this is what I explained to them. What we did in our day, you know, uh, you know, we was helping our four parents, our grandmothers and things. You know, we lived in the projects. So what we did now, that's what we were about, you know. But now, like I tell the young people, you got computers, you had a black president and all that. But during my time, I went out with the electric typewriter. You know, I don't know about computers and nothing like this. So I, was, I tell them, you got a better opportunity than what we had, you know. I, I don't condone them to go into the game, you know. I got a daughter graduated from USC, you know. I got a son who's a paramedic, you know. I got another son going to Chico State. So uh, we did what we had to do. What's more important to you, uh, love or money? Mo well, money, you know. I, you know, I, I was grown up with money, you know, I was in the game, so I love money. But what's so good about it, that I liked about it, I was able to fall back on my music. See, when I got out of that life, after I cleaned my life up in there, I was able to pick up my guitar and play the blues. You know, put a record out there. I got a record out there now. It's number five in the world, you know? And then I got all kinds of awards, you know, inducted in the Blues Hall of Fame, B.B. King, you know? And, uh, so I was successful in the game 150 trophies as the Godfather in the game and in the Hall of Fame in the music. So that's why my books say uh, Blues Man Mac, OG Femmo Slim, How I Conquered the Stage and the Streets. What personality trait helped you most as a pimp? What personality? Well, uh, uh, I always been a ladies man. You know, I always was a charmer. You know, I could charm in, in, in the chick. You know, if I, I can stop in the chick, you know, uh, I'll tell you a story. I was uh, uh, up there by the Chinese theater. You know, I just came back and I seen this Caucasian lady all dressed in white walking down Sunset. Okay, right there by, no, Hollywood Boulevard, right by Chinese. And I stopped the car and went around in this little alley right there, you know, before you get to the Chinese theater, you know, so. I came around, just before she crossed that alley, I pulled up, I blocked off, I said, baby. She said, what? I said, here's your car. This is your car here. She said, what you mean? I said, it's all white, red inside. This car came for you. And she was so fascinated. I said, get in. And spin around, she got in the car. And couldn't find out, we rode and talked. Couldn't find out, she was O.J. Reynolds, the tobacco king, was his granddaughter. You know, and we talked, you know, and... And I found that out, you know, I told her to have a good day, you know. What, what do you think the core of the pimp and prostitute relationship is? Do you think the girls are looking for a, a, boy, a man in their life, a boyfriend, a, a father figure? Well, I, I think... Uh, they call you guys daddy. Some of the girls I had, I think, I would like a father figure to them, I would say, you know. Yeah, I would say that. What's the craziest thing you've seen in all your years of doing it? The crazy thing I seen. I seen a pimp running the whole down Samson, down Sunset Boulevard, <laughs> and the cops behind him. <laughs> yeah, it started off at Wilcock, and it changed him all the way down to uh, 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 almost the cars in Charles. From the city to the county. And what's the most important lesson you've learned in your life? Well, most of all, I learned in my life is uh, if you play, you're going to pay. It's all, it ain't always light at the end of the tunnel. So we was having fun, fancy clothes, fancy jewelry, fancy cars. But, you know, at the end, you're going. It's just take you might get the wrong female. This, the law says it takes two. You get the wrong female, and uh, if there's the one that they're scared, you're gone. Look what they do in Vegas. Look at it, send all them, all them, all, all them players uh, and put them in penitentiary. But see, we stayed out the penitentiary. See, I had good lawyers. I had Willie Brown. 
No, he was the house speaker. He was my lawyer. He kept you out of jail? Mm hmm Kept you out of prison? That's right. Yeah. So how many girls did you have at the, at the peak? I had 23 girls walking up and down Sunset all the way from Hobart to, to, to Beverly Hills, the Beverly Hills Hotel. 23 girls. How much, so how much money do you make from having... Well, it, well, it varies, you know. Uh, some come in, but it may have five, you know, 500. Some had 250. But when you add it all up, it was a lot of money. Yeah. But I want to say this year, I wasn't no gorilla pimp. I was a gentleman. I call myself gentleman of leisure. And that's why the women love me today. When I walk down the street, they want to take a picture with me. I walk down the street by uh, uh, UC Berkeley. All, all the students came out wanted to take a picture with me. And the police rolled by and looked. I said, eat your heart out. <laughs> all right. All right, Phil Marston. Thank you so much for talking with me. All right, then. Thank you. And I want to say one more thing. Oh, sure. Let's hear it. Okay, now, me, we are the royalty team now. Me, Divine Brown, and Gangster Brown, and Kenny Red, we are royalty. Bishop is church. We are royalties. Okay? <laughs>